Good morning from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you all for joining us today for our webinar titled Five Steps to Boost SEO Rank and Get More Customers. I'm Denise Mailing, and I'm here with AIS Media founder and CEO Thomas Harpointner, your presenter today. If you're just becoming familiar with AIS Media, we're headquartered in the Buckhead Business District of Atlanta, Georgia. And if you're nearby, we certainly invite you to visit us in person. We'd love to have you. Our team specializes in developing highly effective digital marketing strategies, search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising, social media marketing, and analytics-based conversion optimization. If you need more customers, we can create a digital marketing program that fits nearly any type of business or budget. Since 1997, our award-winning digital marketing programs have helped hundreds of companies attract customers and drive growth, ranging from funded startups to Fortune 500 corporations. We're delighted that also many of our current clients and those Fortune 500 clients have attended our webinars. For his unique digital marketing insights, Thomas has been featured in, on the Today Show, CNBC, Fox Business, 11 Alive, Bloomberg, and publications like the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Fortune, and Entrepreneur. He's also spoken at numerous conferences and, of course, presented many of our webinars. So today, let's work with Thomas. Well, thank you, Denise. And uh, Thomas is a little bit medicated today, so if I sound nasally, it's definitely not your speakers, it's me. Um, but I am delighted to share this webinar today. Um, we, you know, our team worked very hard together to um, put some really great insights um, into this presentation for you today with the goal to give you actionable tactics and tips that you can put to use in your business and see immediate results. Um, search engine optimization has been one of those things that historically has taken a lot of time, and it can. But um, we've also uh, discovered some methods that can be immediately effective that you can apply um, in terms of improving your website and making small incremental improvements to your, your content and your code so that you rank significantly higher, much faster than we have in the past. So um, in today's format, it's going to be a little bit different. We've done many of these types of webinars over the years, but we're, we're going to lead today with actually showing you examples of the type of results that have been produced for real clients. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll actually show you several success stories and then um, show you the type of work that we did that produced these types of amazing results. Because I think everybody likes to see what was actually done for other businesses, so we're not just speaking in theory. But just before I get into that, um, I'd like to uh, zoom out just a little bit and look at the big trends that are affecting SEO and digital marketing performance. And um, you know, first off, it's important to know that you know, 89% of U.S. internet users now search online before they actually buy. Um, that number will only continue to increase. So, you know, knowing regardless of whether you're a, a business that markets to consumers or company that markets to other businesses or a nonprofit, um, the majority of your audience is going to go online to find what they're looking for. And of, of course, search has been one of those primary vehicles um, in which consumers and B2Bs find what they're looking for. Um, B2B decision makers spend only about 1% of the time buying and 99% of the time researching and talking to each other. And you know, having worked with many large organizations and some Fortune 500 companies, it's, it's often been thought that uh, business decisions are very analytical and not very emotional at all. Uh, but on the contrary, we have found that, you know, when you have a, a, a business manager who has to make a business decision, they tend to do a lot of research before they make a, a, a buying decision or when they choose a vendor because it's a very emotional decision. 
it's you know it, it, it could cost them their job. So they do a great deal of research, and of course, the type of research that helps them most is the type of content that you can produce, which gets indexed in search. Um, Eighty-two percent of people searching online take action, and that's a very good thing because in uh, you know, if you take social media, and we've often related to social media as a cocktail party where people go and have fun, and along the way, they may make some business connections or find a great deal. But in, when it comes to search, when someone's searching for a dentist or a financial planner or a mortgage, uh, they're usually on a mission. They're, they're, they're looking for something very specific. Um, they do take action. Uh, so if you're found very high in search, there's a very high probability that you're going to get traffic to your website, calls from that traffic. Um, but if you can't be found, then you know obviously uh, you're, you're not even giving those customers an opportunity to do business with your business. Uh, so let's you know let's look, let's have a look at one of these key trends. This is not necessarily anything new. Um, in fact, we've noticed this trend years ago. We knew this in 2012, 2013, but sooner or later, mobile internet traffic was going to surpass desktop internet traffic. And of course, it did happen. Um, and you know, of course, if, if you're just now becoming aware of this, then it's probably a lot more urgent than it was a few years ago. If you look at your own analytics to see how much traffic to your site is coming from mobile devices instead of desktop computers, uh, you might be surprised. Now, of course, not every, not every business is created equal, and if you're a B2B and you're catering towards a certain niche market, it's quite possible that the majority of your traffic is still coming from desktop PCs. Uh, so my recommendation is to very closely examine the analytics to determine the source of web traffic these days. Um, email marketing campaigns uh, from our own webinar, we have found that almost 70% of all our emails are open to mobile devices first. It's not to say that people register or they take action. Um, often they just put it aside to save it for later. But many of our offers, many of our email communications are open to mobile devices. And of course, we are a B2B. Um, so, uh, you know, I recommend that you also examine your traffic to see if it's consistent with these uh, bigger trends. Another key factor to consider is search behavior, that almost 90% of people click on links of the first page of search results. Now this may not come a, as a complete surprise to you because we're all consumers and when we search on Google or any of the other search engines, if we're finding what we're looking for, then there's probably not a big need to dig much deeper. So, of course, it's very, very important to be found very high. Um, what, what might be surprising, though, is that almost half the people who search today can't really distinguish the difference between a paid ad and, or, and an organic listing. And that's mainly because Google has and continues to change its layout. It's recently changed its layout again. Uh, the screenshot here shows the layout from just you know, a few months ago, which had ads at the top and organic listings at the bottom and then more ads to the right. Well, that has recently changed, and it's made a significant impact on uh, search marketing, and we're going to do a deeper dive into that today. 50% uh, of mobile searches do have local intent, so it's one other thing to keep, to keep in mind that when people do search on mobile devices, there's a very good possibility that these are local customers um, most likely looking to come to the business or call the business or looking for a business that's very uh, close in proximity to them. And that 81% of these mobile searches are driven by speed and convenience. And by that we mean, uh, well, uh, you've been on a mobile phone before, so mobile users do have about half the bandwidth and when they're on the go, they're also quite impatient. So when they click a link and it doesn't come up very quickly, it doesn't respond, or if the website is slow, they become very impatient and they click off. They're actually much more impatient than their desktop user counterparts are. 
So speed of the site is extremely important. And as far as convenience goes, they're generally looking for businesses that are in close proximity to them. Because if you're in a densely populated city, we're, you know, we're dealing with enough traffic. Um, so finding a dentist or uh, you know, a restaurant or um, a retail store in our neighborhood becomes very important. So our number one mission you know, as marketers really needs to be to get on page one on Google. Um, now, that, it's always been a goal, but today it really is much, much more important than it's ever been before because the number of people clicking past page one on Google have dramatically declined. And here's why. Google recently changed its layout. And the, the screenshot in front of you is a layout from just a few months ago. And similar to the one that uh, you know, I shared with you a moment ago, we, we see ads at the top, we, we see organic rankings at the bottom, and we see more ads to the right. There was also a map to the top right. It was pretty cluttered. And, and that's because the majority of users were desktop and, and they had a lot more space. But Google also recognized that with the growing trend of mobile internet users, it was time to serve up a better experience specifically for those users. So, you know, Google took the bull by the horns and said, well, uh, you know, let's, let's lead by example. So Google changed its layout, and you may have noticed this. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't, a, it didn't make the, you know, the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and it didn't make CNN amongst all the political news. Um, so, some people may not even have noticed this, but if you pull up, uh, you know, if you perform a Google search on your mobile device or your desktop, you'll notice that those right ads, those right side ads, simply have disappeared or they're being replaced with other type of content. Um, Google also added space for more ads to the top of the page, whereas before the number, uh, the top ads were limited to three. Now, we often see four ads. Now, if you consider the implications of that, more ads at the top simply push organic rankings further down. So if you know, half the people can't really distinguish a paid listing from an organic listing and more, more of the organic listings are at the bottom and more organic listings come in the form of pictures and map listings, um, it's become a little bit more complicated, and soon it's already looking like Google's transforming slowly into an almost paid to, exclusive pay-to-play model. We're not quite there yet because organic listings are still, uh, they do still exist on page one, but in certain page results or search results, especially highly competitive keywords, if you're in a business that's very, very competitive. You're going to see a lot more competition from paid advertisers. So those top organic rankings are more important than ever. The good news is if you, ha if you, if you have secured a page one rank and you are listed towards the top, you can expect more traffic than ever before. And that the competition for those paid rankings is heating up, so it's becoming more and more expensive to, to be in those positions. Um, instead of ads at the right, you know, we're, we're seeing other type of content like pictures and ratings and reviews and other suggestions, um, other photos, and yeah, this visual type of content to help users better find what they're looking for. Um, another example, number of listings in um, ads, it's, uh, Google started incorporating uh, Google Map listings into page one search results a while ago, but the big change is that it has limited the number of Google map listings to three. There used to be seven, but now you only will see three. So again, if, you're, if your business is among those three, and say you have multiple locations, each location really needs to be properly optimized. And the goal ought to be to get listed in those top three. If you're in those top three, you can expect to receive a lot more traffic than you have before because, you know, three, three is better than seven. 
But if you're not amongst those three, you can also expect a decline in traffic, and you may have already seen that. So my recommendation is that right now is a perfect time of year, particularly if you're in retail before the holiday shopping season kicks off, to do a deep dive and analysis of your website traffic, your analytics, to figure out what type of traffic you're getting, where it's coming from, and whether your rankings in maps and, and SEO, uh, the organic ranks have increased or whether they've declined. If, if you've seen a recent decline in traffic and you haven't been able to figure out why, there's a good chance that Google's new layout and Google's new update may have something to do with it and it's time to take action before more months in the year passes by. We're already halfway through 2016, as hard as that is to believe. So the net, net of all of this is that uh, getting ranked on the first page really ought to be the number one goal. Um, and as we say, the best place to bury a dead body, put them on page you know, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, further down you go, the, more, the less likely um, those pages are to be clicked on. So if there's some content you want to bury, then just go ahead and ignore it and then don't search engine optimize it. But if you, have, if you have content that you want to get found, if you have products that you really want to sell or services you're trying to promote, you've got to get on page one. Um, good news is there are more than one way. There's more than one way to get listed on page one, given that there are opportunities with paid ads, there are opportunities with maps, there are opportunities with ratings and reviews, and there are opportunities with regular type of content. So I'm about to show you some examples of different types of businesses. And as I've, you know, as I've pointed out, we've worked, we work with many different types of companies, um, even nonprofits, for all different types of search campaigns. Um, the ones we're going to show today, we wanted to put a good sampling in um, to give you a sense for the type of businesses that um, we work with on a regular basis. We're going to show you some actual success stories. And one of these success stories is an imaging company. They do MRI scans, CT scans. They do an amazing job. Um, and they offer MRI and CT scans at highly competitive prices, much cheaper than what you would get if you went to a local hospital. Um, and, of course, their main challenge is to make sure that the world knows that they exist. I mean, if you can get a, if you can get a top rate, MRI scan for you know five hundred dollars or less. This is the place to go. And um, American Health Imaging, they've grown substantially. They they have now eighteen locations in the southeast. They're a fantastic success story. Um, but their main challenge was getting found because, as you can imagine, there was a great deal of competition for those type of keywords. So. Um, so we took a very aggressive SEO approach. And within a short period of time, they saw a 328% increase in page one rankings, 44% increase in site traffic. So getting ranked on page one really does drive a tremendous amount of traffic. But let me illustrate. Um, we got started on a campaign, and this is just a six-month snapshot. Um, we're, we're obviously at a different uh, phase now. But when we, when we got started last November, uh, October, um, you know, their, their site traffic was hurting. They had recently gone through a new site design. Google had updated um, some algorithms, and uh, American Animal Health Imaging was, uh, was in need for some good help. And over a six-month period, have a look at the traffic and, in terms of how this increased. If this were your business and you saw this type of increase in site traffic, wouldn't that be exciting? If you're a manager and you're able to report this to your boss, I mean, this, this makes a great presentation. And in their business, when people search for MRI and CT scans, they're not just looking for entertainment. You know, it's not a, it's not a news website. They're looking for services. So um, that type of increase in organic traffic also increased the uh, number of phone calls for appointments they, they received. Um, American Health Imaging told us that their uh, number of appointments they, get, they got from SEO was at an all-time high. So it made a huge impact on their business. Now, you know, have a look at just one thing that really helped drive the traffic to their website. 
and we took full advantage of Google's new layout, knowing that we've got to get their locations on the local maps. With 18 locations in the southeast, we looked at each individual location to make sure it was properly optimized. And they didn't just show up on page one in Google, uh, they're showing up on at the very top of organic listings, at the top of maps. Um, and they have some, and they started getting some great ratings and reviews there as well. So, you know, imagine this is your business. People are searching for a keyword like MRI, and you're listed at the very top. These clicks don't cost any money. These are free clicks. So the all the time that we spend in creating quality content, optimizing your page for Google Maps is really, really paying off for them. Um, another, another really good example. And this type of a company, it's a little bit offbeat. I mean, no one really thinks about trailers, right? Um, you know, unless you're, you know, hauling, uh, you know, really heavy equipment like forklifts around or ATM machines, um, you know, who thinks of this type of stuff? Well, this, this company, uh, Drop Deck Depot, they've been around a while, and the majority of their business has always come from referrals and repeat business. And when they launched their new website, and, and they did a great job on their new site design, it's, it's beautiful, um, and we saw that as a great opportunity to also optimize their content, because that's what Google recommends, that you do SEO while you're actually doing site design, and we'll show you that quote later. Um, but we wanted to make sure that their new site launch um, wouldn't just impress people when they got there, it would also increase the number of people they attracted. And very short period of time, in this case, 60 days, in just two months, uh, Drop Deck Depot saw a 600% increase in organic search engine ranking. And, and for very highly competitive, highly competitive, very important keywords, they saw a 22%, 22.23% increase in site traffic. So those keywords really drove site traffic, and in their particular case, uh, they measure success by the number of phone calls they get and the number of orders. Um, uh, we have a great case study of this on our website. We have a blog about this. If you go to AISmedia.com, click on our blog. If you'd like to read the full story on Drop Deck Depot and see a really funny quote from Drop, Drop Deck Depot's CEO, uh, just visit our site and read all about it. Um, now, let's, you know, let's take a smaller business, a pediatric dentist, fantastic pediatric dentist um, on the West Coast, uh, fantastic dental. They, they needed help getting more patients into their local practice, knowing very well you know, California is a big place. They don't need to be listed nationally. They don't even need to be listed regionally necessarily. They need to be ranked very high in about a five to 10 mile radius, which represents where the majority of their patients are going to come from. And um, so we took a hyper local approach to get them their 750% increase in Google search rank. Um, what's exciting about uh, this case study is it also happened in about a 60 day period. Because again, as, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, SEO has the reputation of taking a very, very long time to get results. And of course that is true. You will see results over a very, very long time if, if, if with sustained effort. But the type of approach that we've taken has gotten businesses, many businesses results in a very short period of time and then also over a long period of time. Have a look at the organic traffic growth from April through March, 325% increase and organic site traffic growth. And in a moment, we're gonna do a deeper dive to show you the actual tactics that we've used for each of these businesses that you can also put to work for yours. Um, but you know, numbers don't lie and screenshots don't lie. Um, you know, if you were in the California area and you did a search for pediatric dentist, it's a very expensive keyword to purchase, by the way, um, if you were to pay Google. Uh, so instead, for Fantastic, they much prefer the number one spot in Google search results in the map on page one. Um, you think they're very happy with these results? Um, well, I can guarantee you they are. Dr. Stella is absolutely happy with the amount of traffic he's received to his website and the amount of appointments that traffic is producing. 
So the approach that we take, it's um, now, you know, we've we've been we've been in the digital marketing space since 1997. A lot of things have changed over time, so our tactics continue to evolve. And um, I'm very happy to say that these latest tactics and and the latest evolution and our approach, as you can see from our case studies, has proven highly effective. We always start with technical SEO, and what technical SEO means is that we examine the health of the actual website. Um, and let me, let's, let's get into that a little bit deeper. Um, for instance, broken links, slow loading web pages. Google hates slow loading web pages. Why? Because, Google, uh, because users don't like slow loading web pages. Nobody likes to wait. Um, we look at uh, how, how quickly pages load, whether the links actually work. Um, and, and how that's affecting the user experience. We, we do a number of checks and we use a number of um, tools to actually check the health of the website. These are things that can be fixed, um, tags on images, pages that don't have titles, links that don't go anywhere, uh, redirects that don't function, and of course, the older the website, the larger the website, the more problems tend to exist, and if if your website provides a poor user experience, uh, then Google's automatically going to derank those websites until they get into better working order. So the first step is we always look at a technical, um, we always look at the technical SEO. We'll, I'll show you a screenshot of what that looks like in a moment. Um, the, uh, the Google mobile friendly update, it's not brand new news today. It was about a year ago. Um, if if your site isn't Google mobile friendly, then you've got to get it up to speed very, very quickly. It's something we still check on. More and more sites are Google mobile friendly, fortunately, but it's still, still something we check on as part of our technical SEO analysis um, because more and more users are using mobile devices. It's that simple. So if your website provides a poor user experience to mobile users, well, guess what? Um, it, it's not just a lack of prettiness. Google has actually gone on record to say that it will de-rank websites that are not Google mobile friendly. If, if your site does not pass Google's mobile friendly test, and they have one, if, you, if your site fails that test, it will be de-ranked for mobile users. It doesn't affect desktop searches. But for people that are searching your, uh, your, your site on mobile devices, um, they're not going to see you as highly ranked as some of your competitors. So this is extremely important if you have the type of business that's uh, frequented by mobile users, like a restaurant or a doctor's office or a retail store. So definitely want to make sure. So here's an example, uh, an actual example. Uh, we, we won't name the company, obviously, but this is an actual example of a relatively large company, um, we ran a mobile uh, test, we ran a technical SEO analysis, and this is what it turned up. Um, the, a the average site speed page load time was about 13.4 seconds. Uh, that, by the way, is considered very, very slow to Google. Google doesn't like that because people don't like that. I mean, do you really want to wait 13 seconds for a page to load if you're searching for something? I don't. <laughs> um, so their, their page load time definitely needs to be improved, and that's usually due to bad coding, maybe images that are too large, many reasons that cause uh, page speed to slow down, but something that we look at. Um, and almost 2,000 errors on the site, and, and we've classified those errors into different categories, and we share those with, with clients. And, and these are things that they can either fix themselves, of course, we'd be happy to help them, um, I think it's extremely helpful to know whether or not your site's health is up to par, right? Um, so at least you know what needs to be done. So that ought to really be the first step, because if your house isn't in order, or your website has a bunch of errors, then creating more content and, and running paid ads and, and um, all these other campaigns really don't pay off as well as they should. After we get past the technical analysis, we look at on-site SEO. 
Um, and that is the process of optimizing a site so search engines can easily identify and classify it. It makes a lot of sense, right? And if the, the website doesn't know what you're doing, oh, sorry, if the search engine doesn't know what your site is doing or what you're selling or what you're offering, and how is it supposed to organize it? And, and one, of the, uh, one of the common problems is if there's too much content on a particular page that isn't related. Um, so say, you know, you have 10 different product offerings. Squeezing 10 different product offerings into a single page confuses search engines. It also confuses users. It's just one thing that to, to look for. Um, but as far as on-site SEO goes, um, yeah, keyword research and making sure that the pages are optimized around a particular keyword. So, you know, if you're a law firm and you offer five different types of services, you have different practice areas, commercial real estate and, and you know, say, you know, divorces, they really shouldn't be uh, talked about on the same page. Often we, we still see that as an issue to correct. Um, page descriptions, page titles sometimes are missing. Um, optimizing the content so that the keywords that you want to be found of, uh, under are actually in the page content, uh, that the images are tagged appropriately, and that internal pages are properly linked to one another. Um, it may seem like common sense, but sometimes, you know, when we, when, when we come in and we look at a, a site from a fresh perspective, these are, these are things can be, that can be quickly corrected and can make an immediate impact on search results, as we've seen from some of our client uh, success stories. Other tips, some of the top tips include um, starting your page uh, or your title on your page with the keyword that you actually want to optimize for. So, um, you know, again, if you're a divorce attorney, use the word, word divorce right in your page title if you're you know, if you're selling big screen TVs, make sure that appears in the page title right away. Um, and leverage multimedia like images, videos, illustration, anything that helps uh, users uh, create a more visual experience. Dropping your keywords in the first 100 words. So if you're writing a blog article, or if you, if you have an online brochure about a product or a service, making sure that your primary keyword, uh, you know, if you were, you know, if you were AHI and you're promoting MRI scans or CT scans, that that term shows up immediately in the first paragraph of your content, so that search engines know they're in the right place. Um, use outbound links. So, you know, we've always heard about the importance of link building. And coincidentally, link building is extremely important. We'll get to that in a moment. But actually creating outbound links to other websites is also very important because it means that you're referencing other sites like Wikipedia or, let's say, industry associations. If you're a plastic surgeon and you're a member of the, um, the National Association of Plastic Surgeons, linking to that organization um, or linking to other relevant um, sources indicates to Google that your, your website is relevant. So increasing the number of outbound links from your site to other sources and other sites actually increases your SEO rank, believe it or not. Um, and of course, using internal links, linking pages to one another, linking blog articles to one another, linking different services to one another, creating at least two to three links to other sections of your site on each page helps increase your SEO rank. And uh, length is uh, strength, as it's called. Um, more content is better than less content. So, you know, if you, if you only have 150 words to describe your product or service, uh, it must not really be that exciting or important. If, you're, if, you, if you have 1,500 to 2,500 words, optimally at least 1,700 words or more, um, that's a lot of content. It means you're an authority. You've got a lot to say. Um, you're going to get higher ranking. So yeah, I know it's difficult to create quality content, so create it around the most important high-value keywords. When, when our team performs an SEO analysis, we always look at um, the cost of paid ads. So if a particular keyword costs, let's say, a dollar, and another one costs $20 per click, 
it of course it of course makes sense to create organic content around the twenty dollar keyword first before we create content around the one dollar keyword because that's a very high value keyword um, and that's one way that our clients have gotten such a massive increase in traffic to their website with only SEO is that we focus on the highest value keywords if they were to buy them. Now let's move on to off-site SEO or, um, and, and, and of course the immediate thing that comes to mind when we say off-site is link building or backlinks. Um, that means getting links from other websites or blogs or any, any type of external content, digital content, back to your website. Um, here's a great, um, you know, here's a great observation or um, a discovery that the number of referring domains directly contribute to the rank that Google gives your website. So, um, I mean, in, I mean, this, this charts, uh, it could be a little bit disappointing. It could also be very exciting. It's exciting to us because it gives us a very, very clear goal to work towards. More is obviously better. Sites that have hundreds and hundreds of links pointing back to them tend to rank much higher than sites that do not. So uh, something to look for, you know, run a, uh, a link report on your website. Figure out how many links you have pointing back to your site. There are a number of tools out there that will do that, and, and uh, we have tools we use here as well. If you ask us, um, I'll, I'll show you a way where you can get a free analysis later on, and we'll be happy to run a, um, a report for you if you don't have those tools readily available so you can see exactly how many links point back to your website. Um, this here is a, is a very enlightening screenshot. Um, an actual case in point from uh, a prospective client we're working with. They, this is a national brand with hundreds of locations, and they, they started recognizing a decline in site traffic. And of course, there's not always one factor that uh, contributes to it, but we were suspicious that their number, that their number one competitor, who was uh, gaining a lot of their traffic. Um, uh, was was you know up to something strategically, and they were you know, apparently they became enlightened about the value of link building, and have a look. So um, the, you know the company we're working with appears in blue, and their competitor appears in green on the chart. And just have a look at the number of links um, they 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 got back to their website over a period of a year. Um, there, there was a significant increase, and as they're gaining links. You know, company we're speaking with, we're actually losing the links by 12%, while the competition's on 8% gain, and, um, and and this directly contributes to site traffic. So the more links, the better. This is the type of report that we could produce for you, so you could actually see how you're trending against some of your top competitors. It's very helpful to know. And when you compare this to Google Analytics to see how um, to see the correlation between links and traffic. Um, you might be surprised at what you see. The um, off-site SEO backlinks, um, if, you know, we've heard the, you know, the term link juice, you know, what does link juice mean? It's very simply, the more, you know, more juice, the better, obviously. But how do you get link juice? Well, it simply means write content, you know, give people something to link to. People aren't going to link to your website. Uh, organizations and associations and other companies don't simply link to your website because they like you. Um, it's usually because you have quality content that appeals to their audience. So writing blog articles helps. Creating content, as I mentioned, with over 1,700 words is very useful. And um, you know, leveraging social media to amplify the reach of your content also helps other organizations and companies discover the quality content that you have. Um, these are all very useful tactics to get the type of link juice that you need. Now, local listings. Um, you know, Google Plus, although it, this webinar isn't about social media, so I won't get into this, but um, it, it is relevant to know that Google Plus and Google Places has recently changed to Google My Business. If you do a Google, if you Google the term Google My Business, you can learn all about Google My Business, if um, this happened under the radar for you. 
Um, but Google My Business is a, is a new direction for Google, um, although Google Maps is not, right? Um, but it puts much heavier emphasis on location and proximity and the ratings and the reviews, um, and it is an evolution. Uh, I think by this time next year, we're going to see some additional um, uh, phases being rolled out by Google. But as it stands today, this is an actual screenshot of a Google map where businesses are listed. Now, now if you think about it, it's certainly not possible right, that uh, what you see on the map represents all businesses that exist on this map. Um, so you've got to ask yourself, why are some businesses listed and why are others not? Um, in this case, you know, we did a search for uh, plastic surgeons or plastic surgery Atlanta, and you see some of them listed. Now, on, on a regular Google search, there are many, many, many more search results for plastic surgeons. But uh, Atlanta uh, Facial Surgery, they're running a paid ad, so it's probably no big surprise that they would be listed at the top. But Atlanta Plastic Surgery Specialist has the number one listing at the top left, as you can see, uh, and they're not paying for it. So, uh, you know, their competitors paying to be number one, and Atlanta Plastic uh, Surgery Specialist is number two, and the organic listings, they've done a fantastic job. The question is, well, how did they get there? Because it's definitely um, helping them drive traffic. So, you know, knowing that customers check Google Maps for proximity searches, often they're starting there first. It's very important to get your business ranked high on Google Maps for these very reasons, because you'll get more business from customers and Google will rank you higher if you're properly optimized. One report that we run um, is a local listings report. And a good way to increase your Google Maps ranking is to make sure um, that all of your contact, your business contact information is properly updated, like your address, your, your telephone number, um, you know, all the basic stuff. But what's become very enlightening is that there are many directories that are competing with Google, and uh, customers don't all go to the same place. In fact, you know, mobile users today are increasingly using apps like Yelp or Yellow Pages to find what they're looking for. They're completely bypassing Google in some cases. You know, if you think about ratings and reviews, many customers go directly to Amazon or they use the Amazon search app on their mobile device to find ratings and reviews on a certain type of product that they're interested in buying. They don't Google at first, right? So this isn't all about Google. Um, so getting your business properly listed in all these different search directories is extremely important. Uh, again, this is an actual screenshot of, uh, of an analysis that we performed for um, you know, one company, and this is, how, and, and this is what showed up. Uh, this is how incomplete their one location, and they have many, many locations, and the majority of their locations are currently incomplete, and it's significantly hurting their site traffic. Uh, this is an example of how incomplete um, their listing is in various um, directories like Google Plus and Facebook and uh, Yellow Pages and Yelp. So if this were your business, um, would it be helpful to know if you know, your rankings or your listing is complete or incomplete? Um, I'm, I'm guessing it probably would be, right? Um, but it's something to know because if you're not getting the traffic that you want, this could be one reason why, and, and, and this is getting heavier and heavier weight. So, um, you know, taking it right from the horse's mouth, right directly from Google, uh, you know, make your business information accurate. When people search for your business, does your phone number show up? Um, is the right address there? Um, does your business appear properly in all major search directories? So, um, you know, take all of these into consideration. These are things that can be done, that, that you can do, that your staff can do, or something that we can help you do. Um, and, you know, if you have questions related to this, you know, please feel free to email us or call our office. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to do a QA. and a um, You know, we're happy to address some of your questions if you'd like to do a little deeper dive than we're able to do on this webinar today. So, um, you know, we try to make it interesting enough, but um, we obviously, in the interest of time, we could spend an entire hour just speaking, you know, speaking about local listings, but we're pressed for time. So if you'd like more information on any one of these, don't hesitate to reach out to us. 
So now, let, you know, moving on to social SEO, what we mean by that, um, it's not just about, you know, Facebook posts and Instagram. Um, it, it, when we say social SEO, it directly relates to ratings and reviews because ratings and reviews are getting heavier and heavier consideration um, from search engines. And isn't it odd, you know, the time that we live in today, that people, including us, you know, as consumers, we, we give heavier weight and consideration to what complete strangers say about a company or a product or a brand than the company or the brand itself, right? I mean, if you think about it, you go to Amazon, the research ratings and reviews on a camera or some product that look, you're looking to buy, and the number of people that will review a camera and give it a three or four star rating has a big impact on our decision, right? So uh, the search engines know that that's a fact. That's just how it is. It's life. Um, odd as it may seem, it's just how it is. Um, so search engines are placing heavier weight and giving heavier consideration to websites that have more ratings and reviews and have better ratings and reviews. Now this system and these algorithms are still being developed. So we'll, I will say today that you know how this, uh, you know how these. Uh, how these sites are ranked in six months or a year from now or how heavy of a weight search engines place on ratings and reviews will change, I expect that they'll give even heavier weight later on than they do today. But it's at least uh, you know, a 10% weight gain that, that, that you can expect from positive ratings and reviews. And we have a good process in place to help facilitate that. I will say um, soliciting ratings and reviews from customers directly can actually hurt you with certain types of directories based on their own user policies. If you read Yelp's user policy, they prohibit the solicitation of ratings and reviews directly from customers, whereas other directories, including Google, has different policies. So uh, be careful because you might get banned and it could actually hurt your business. But have a look. Um, you know, again, you know, did a, this, this was yesterday, this is right off the press, did a quick search for, you know, dog groomers in Atlanta. Uh, paid ranking shows up at the top, Google listings uh, and map, map results show up directly underneath. These are organic results. And, um, you know, these companies are doing a great job in getting good ratings and reviews. And you've got to ask yourself, if you're looking for a dog groomer, would this impact your decision, right? Would you give these top three Companies consideration with 37, 16, 12 positive ratings and reviews and almost five star ratings, or would you really go to page three, four, five, or six in Google? Um, chances are these guys are doing pretty well. Um, and notice how Yelp shows up directly underneath, right? So this is a, a big directory, and you know a lot of companies have had, you know, a lot of businesses have had sort of a love hate relationship with Yelp. It can significantly help or hinder your business but you've got to play by the rules. So it really does help, um, you know, to know what those are. Here is a screenshot of, uh, of, of a mobile device, right? And, and how Google is now displaying results on mobile devices. I mean, notice that, you know, Google expects that proximity is key. So the map, uh, map is displayed immediately. Um, uh, companies with, you know, high star ratings and more reviews tend to show up higher. Um, won't always be the case. You know, we've seen search results where someone shows up, they, they have no ratings and reviews and are still ranking high. Um, but we are seeing that Google is giving higher and higher consideration to companies that have, um, you know, positive ratings and reviews. It's not a big surprise, right? Um, so 92% of people do read reviews um, and, um, you know, you probably do as well, you know, as business owners and executives and managers, we're also consumers, so sometimes we only have to look at our own search behavior to know that this is happening. Um, and look at the search behavior of your friends, your family, and your colleagues, and you'll know, um, you know, probably what you ought to be doing. The, the, the key is sometimes just figuring out how to go about it. So here's the quote that I mentioned earlier. Right? Um, and this comes directly off of Google's page. In fact, it's been there for years. This hasn't changed. It's nothing new. Um, but it's a question that we get often. 
um, or it's a scenario that comes up a lot. You know, companies and organizations will come to us and they'll say, look, we're, we're thinking about redesigning our website or we're in the process of website redesign. Uh, when is a good time to think about search engine optimization? When's a good time to hire you? When's a good time to, um, you know, have this discussion? Well, uh, Google says do it early, right? Because if you if you hire a, a company or a designer and and all they're creating is a a, a a great new visual experience without SEO in mind, there's a high probability that when the site launches, you could actually take an SEO hit that your site will get ranked lower. And your old site, we've seen this again and again, um, you know, cannot be fixed if that were to happen. I mean, say if you've, already, if you've just launched a site or you're about to launch the site, could you take a significant SEO hit? Um, sure, there's a possibility. Can it be fixed? Absolutely, but, um, you know, it may take some time. So running a technical SEO analysis, um, doing all this research ahead of time or doing, uh, during the time that you're in the design process, is definitely better than launching, hoping, waiting, taking a big hit, to, you know, taking a big hit to your business revenue, and then, you know, coming to us with an emergency. So the sooner the better, and um, which is why we're um, offering a free analysis. And everyone who is attending today um, can take advantage of this. If you go to aismedia.com forward slash WPA which stands for Website Performance Analysis, um, we'll run one of these for free for you. We'll do the SEO analysis if you don't have the tools um, at your organization. We'll do a local listings review to see how well, you know, your business shows up in these local directories. Um, you know, tell us how many locations you have, um, which will be helpful to our team. Um, you know, tell us, um, you know, who your top competitors are. Um, and we'll see how, you know, we'll, we'll actually show you how you stack up against them in terms of um, external links go. And, um, and, and currently how well you rank. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll give you a free consultation. We'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one to answer some of the questions that we didn't have time to get into today. So um, it's, it's what we've done for many years. We love to do it. Don't feel you're imposing on us. Um, and, you know, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a Q and A. So with the, with the time that we have left today, if there are any questions that you have, um, you know, please feel free to type them into the interface and, to, um, and you know, we'll, we'll address those. You know, Denise, you know, she works with businesses every single day, um, and, and then she'll be happy to help you as well. So if you have any questions, please fire away. So thank you, Tom. Um, so everyone that is still on the line, uh, Thanks for staying. Looks like a lot of you have, and you've also sent in quite a few questions. Uh, we're going to work through as many as we can. Uh, they are in random order, so not specifically uh, by priority. But one of the questions is, what if I don't have a location in the city? So if you don't have a location in the city, then you do have to look at possibly a combination of PPC and organic. And when you do both, Oftentimes, you'll have a 50% increase in click-through rates. So, again, if you're not a local business, you're not going to be able to count on that local three-pack, which is pushing the organic search down. You may have to look at a combination of PPC and organic SEO. Another question is, what is the average mobile traffic? So, what should we be looking for? Um, so it's really diverse. We have some clients that have maybe 12 to 15% coming through mobile. We have other clients that are at 60 and 70%. And when you're at 60 or 70% mobile traffic, you really need to start focusing very specifically and heavily on how you are advertising and how you're showing up in organic search. So for those that are at 12%, we tend to build websites. Uh, for mobile that basically highlight, like, so for a consulting firm, what we might do is just highlight the team members, uh, any kind of download of a white paper or contact information. When it's a retail store that sells nationally through its e-commerce website and has 45% or 50%, 
then we really do have to look at the shopping cart and how well that renders on mobile and what is the friction that's being experienced. So if you don't know that, if you don't know your mobile traffic right now, I highly recommend you go into Google Analytics, you look at it, you start thinking about how much weight you have to put on that mobile audience. Uh, as Thomas showed, it was increasing. Again, for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of go through these. Hopefully, we'll make it through all. Uh, someone asked if they can just pay for the traffic. They don't have time for organic. Uh, sure, you can, but long term, is it really viable? Because at some point there may be diminishing returns, right? So search changes, behavior changes, um, yes, you can pay for traffic. Yes, we have clients who rely on that, pay for traffic, want the leads that way. What we really want to be concerned with is the bounce rate and the negative key terms, that they're not paying for key terms that are variances. I'll give you an example, laser hair removal, uh, maybe you think that's all you're paying for, but the reality is laser ear hair removal, laser nose hair removal, laser at home hair removal. You'd be paying for those as well if you really don't stay on top of it. So it may be worth looking at having a professional work with you on your PPC. Yes, you can go that route, but we call it paying the toll master every month. Or you can go that route, say, three, four months until you build up your organic search. It always seems to be a higher converting um, channel organic and seems higher quality. Those are just the numbers, though. You can still make money through PPC. Um, someone asked, I have page number one listings, but a very high bounce rate. Well, this is a great question because we have a client who's getting tremendous amount of hits to their blog. The issue is that they're sending people to their blog for their competitor's brand customer service. So I can't say who they are, but basically what happens is the person sees, oh, brand customer service, clicks on it, sees that it's a blog about the service, and immediately bounces. This is wreaking havoc on the rest of the organic terms because they keep writing blogs about their competitor's customer service, and I'm talking not just a few, I'm talking 50 to 100 blogs. So this is a problem. You really need for your blog content to be relevant to keep it sticky. Otherwise, you wreak havoc on the rest of all of your efforts because Google sees that bounce rate and says, come on, it, you know, if you, if you can't keep them, why should we be sending them? Um, I have time for just a couple of more. Uh, someone wrote, I'm doing social, paid, organic, email. I don't know which is driving the sales. How do I know where to put my focus, or is it equal for all? Um, okay, so this sounds like you may not have your Google Analytics set up correctly, so I'm going to recommend that you go into Google Analytics and look for either setting up events or goals and having a conversion funnel. Otherwise, you won't be able to manage. Um, can't measure what we can't manage. Can't manage what we can't measure, rather. So uh, this is probably a Google Analytics or an e-commerce um, goal conversion setting uh, scenario. Last question is how to best get links in 1,700 words sounds like a lot. So I'm going to wrap up today's session by answering this question. Um, getting links is like PR. It takes effort. It takes a specialty. It takes people who know people and getting some influencer. The blog, uh, having those articles linked means that they have to be really good. 1,700 words does seem like a lot, but not when you're considering uh, a really solid article or, uh, or white paper. Maybe you do that once every month or once every other month, and then your blog article should be a minimum of 500 words for Google to even consider. So it's not always 1,700 words. Um, we do recommend it. The best way to get links is much like PR. You've really got to start the, with the relationships that you have with the influencers and understand how to connect with them, how to write for them, what they're looking for. And I think Thomas showed, you know, 300 links. There are sites that have tens of thousands of links, um, but they're also big sites. So 300 links is doable. It's a goal, and it's really about either hiring the firm that can get you those links 
or really having someone in your organization be your PR specialist for link building. So with that, everyone, we really appreciate your time today and your questions. And please reach out. You know where to find us. Have a great day.